Ah, the humble coffee bean. Who would have thought this little bean could bring such delight to so many people around the world? And yet here it is, brightening our day, fueling our training and racing, being entwined with our social nature, popularized by our favorite TV shows and YouTubers, generally just being a cornerstone of many of our days. But is coffee really all that and a bag of potato chips? Well, if you know me, then you'll know I think there's probably only one way to find out. Oh, I'm in trouble. Let me introduce you to my new 30-day experiment because in there, that coffee shop right there, Mac and Mary are buying me either a caffeinated or decaffeinated coffee. And I don't know which. And it's that simple. I'm interested to see whether over a period of 30 days, I can tell the difference between caffeinated and decaffeinated, whether it makes a difference on my day, and crucially, whether it affects my training in any way. So for the first couple of days that we're in Sydney, they're gonna buy me coffees and not gonna tell me whether it's caffeinated or decaffeinated, but they are gonna write it down so that I can tell at the end of the month. And I'm gonna note how I feel throughout the day, how my training goes. And then when we get home, Mary has very kindly agreed to make the coffee for us every single morning for the entire month of January using either caffeinated or decaffeinated ground coffee with the machine that we have downstairs. And yes, I know what you're thinking, that this is just a cynical ploy by me to try and get Mary to make coffee every morning for the month of January. Yes, okay, you are correct, but also I stand by the experiment and we need to go back to Australia right now. This is it. The experiment officially starts January the 1st. I have no idea what they bought me. Yeah, it's decaffeinated. Yeah, I know it for sure. I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> mm. This is going to be a fun game. And so the game was on. We flew home from Australia on the 3rd, so for the next week I had to add jet lag into the mix of feelings. Then we went back to work and training got going. It was definitely going to be interesting to see if I could navigate my way through this. We tended to stick to making coffee at home even at weekends as it was more controllable that way and there was much less chance of me accidentally finding out. Towards the end, I was all over the place. Day 29. Tomorrow's day 30, two days left and I'm just gonna make the coffee. What do we want to go for? Not decaf tomorrow. I'm exhausted and I'm having to drink this coffee as well as Ben. So I'm gonna go full caffeine and let's see if he feels good on it. Here we go. Here we are, night before. I've got a dog walk in the morning so I'm just gonna set it up now. He reckons he can tell the difference, but I've tricked him so many times. The mind games have been a lot of fun. Mm, smell that. That looks about right. And then all we've got to do tomorrow is switch it on. So, guess Ben will shave in the morning how he's feeling when he enjoys his brew. See ya. Here we go. Here we go. Something tells me that's decaf, but I don't know why. I've got no basis for that. Mary knows. I know. I don't know. And you know. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But that just felt like decaf. I'll know in a few minutes. Well, I won't actually. I say I'll know, and I always think, oh, here comes that caffeine hit. And I've been less and less able to detect it over the month. But I'm just not sure. How are you enjoying your coffee, Mary? That's what I needed. Mm. Oh my God, it's happening. Come on, in the car, Mary. I'm driving, remember? Uh, I'm going to get a coffee. It's February the 1st today. It is first, isn't it? Yeah, it's February the 1st today. And for the first day in over a month, I'm going to know 
that it has caffeine in it. I couldn't be more excited, but weirdly interested to see what happens to me. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if I could feel any benefit whatsoever from that coffee, but maybe I could. I don't, this is messing with my head, Mary. Mary's completely messed with my head. I think it's ruined, but it is quite exciting to find out exactly what happened all month. And that's what happened. We went straight home like excited little nerds and wrote down what happened in reality and what I perceived for every day in January. But before the monthly reveal, we brought in the man that was there at the start with us, the one and only Mac, to start the ball rolling. You and Mary went and purchased me a coffee, is that correct? That is correct. Now, Mac, tell me, I predicted that you got me a caffeine coffee. What did you get me? It was a caffeinated coffee. Woo! I knew it! And then it was time to move on to the rest of the month's results with Mary. I'm actually quite nervous. I'm excited. I'm actually really nervous instead of quite nervous. So that is Ben's results. Guesses, essentially. And Mary's record, the truth. The truth. Okay, so let's open them up. Wowzers, okay. Why don't we just, uh, let's go through a few of the ones that I think were really obvious to me first off and see if I got that right. I'm really excited. Okay, let's start with the second day. So January the 2nd, whilst we were still in um, Australia, and I think this was my prediction. Hmm. You know you want to say you don't have to buy Yeah, decaf is what I'm saying. I'm saying decaf. That's what I feel. What was it? Caffeine. No, it wasn't. Yeah. Oh man, so from the first day I couldn't tell. All right, and then let's have a look. So can I go to the 8th of January? You drank your coffee in the morning and went, woo, and then realized what you did. So I wrote, I didn't know how it felt, but I put oh. caffeine. It was decaf. No, <laughs> Because did you do that on purpose? No, it just came out, but I genuinely, look, I've written it here. You thought it was caffeine because I said, woo, but I did genuinely feel it. Really? And that was the day I thought, oh, maybe it's the taste of coffee that makes you feel energised rather than actually the caffeine. 28th, caffeine, highly productive day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I felt really focused that day, like really actually, laser focused. In the last week, I gave you loads of decaf because I realised I probably hadn't given you enough through the month. Oh, really? It almost seems quite fitting that I do this sum up while the coffee's brewing, doesn't it? Because this is caffeinated and I know it's caffeinated and it's the first one I've made for Mary in over a month. But when we look back at the results, um, something interesting happened. There was a pattern. The first thing was, by the way, that I got 65% of the days correct. So that's two thirds, that's over a half, that's way more than chance. But the first half of the month, I was a lot more wrong a lot more times than I was in the second half of the month and I can probably attribute that to as I mentioned earlier in the video the jet lag the return to training the return to work and just me feeling like I was upside down most of the time well, actually that went down to 60% the first 15 days I got 60% right and the last 15 days I got 69% right which created an average of 65% but that is not even the most interesting aspect in all of this. Far more interesting I've found are the conclusions that I've drawn about the implications this has for my everyday life and in particular my training. Oh, the first conclusion I can make is that taste and the initial hit of the caffeine is definitely not a factor. As you probably saw in the video earlier, I absolutely couldn't tell when it came down to taste and I couldn't tell from an initial hit either. I really genuinely couldn't feel it. My conclusions tended to be at the end of the day based on how the day went, productivity, uh, things like that, rather than anything initially or even my training because it actually didn't affect my training at all. I've looked back at my training on training peaks and it turns out that I trained just as well on day 
days when I had caffeine as when I didn't, and there was no discernible impact on my training days. So what is my overall conclusion about this whole caffeine experiment? I think it comes down to the fact that I know that caffeine is about the best legal performance enhancer that you can get, and I would be crazy not to take it in a race. But what I've also realized is that I don't need it during training, I don't necessarily need it throughout my day, and I think if I didn't have it on race day or I didn't have access to it, I'm less likely to get the cold sweats now and, and panic, and I think I'll be all right. Turns out, actually, that I'm in love with the idea of coffee rather than the caffeine hit, and that is just fine with me. And God knows what I'm gonna make next week, but it'll certainly be something revolving around mine and Mary's car crash taper that we're going through right now. Perfect, perfect lead up to Seville. That was sarcasm. See you next week.